Well, what a joy today is. We're going to take a little bit of a break from our Minor Prophet series. That's where we've been. I tried all week to try to figure out how to get Zechariah or Zephaniah to be a Baptism Day message, and I just could not do it. So we're going with the book of Acts, if you got your Bible. We're going to be in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 8, and we're going to look at this, and this is an amazing day. You may be coming here today, and you're like, man, I don't, I'm not planning on getting baptized, and God's going to do something in your heart And by the next hour, you're going to have been in the waters and be baptized. It's going to be amazing. God's going to do some great things like that. We call it spontaneous baptism. God knew, but we didn't know. And so we're excited about that. So you be thinking about that, be praying about that, let God be working on your heart with that. So baptism day, we're going to baptize, you know, we're just excited. We're going to baptize a bunch of you. I don't know how many, but it's going to be amazing and be incredible. So that's what we're going to do today. But let me tell you what we're not going to do today. I want to show you a little video of what is not going to happen today, a fun, funny video of what we're not doing today. I'm huh? ready. You ready? Yeah. Ready for what? The baptism. Oh. I get, here's the baptism. Get what? Lord, get chased. Chased and fell off the look. Against the water. You sure? Look. Right. Are you sure Chase wants to get baptized? Yeah, he needs the Holy Ghost. Ma, you haven't got baptized yet. All my, all my toys. I have a couple, a couple more toys to baptize. Not today, but today, today on this show today, I'm just baptizing. Okay, Lou. Okay. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. You ready? Go ahead, son. I just go. Ready? Okay. Ready? Okay. Me to the wall. Oh, yeah. Take me to the wall, oh, the wild, wild just little but the wild, I just look obedience to the command. I baptize you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Oh. Oh. Isn't that cute? That is just, I just couldn't, couldn't, I couldn't wait to share that with you today because it's so, so cute. In the book of Acts, it doesn't talk about baptizing toys, though. It talks about baptizing people. And we end up with this amazing guy named Philip, and he's going to meet somebody called the Ethiopian eunuch is what we call him. And as we see this story, it's going to give us a lot of information about baptism. So I want you to be listening. I want you to learn. I want you to think about these things, and I want you to think about it with your heart and let God speak to your heart. And if you've already been baptized like I have, then that's great too. We're just going to learn some things together. So let's look, if we can, at Acts chapter 8, beginning in verse 25 is where we're going to be. So after they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they traveled back to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. So they're having a revival basically in Acts chapter eight, all throughout Samaria. And that's what Philip is about. Now, here we go. Verse 26. And an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and said, get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. You heard of Gaza lately, this desert road. So he got up and he went. And there was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch, a high official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem and he was sitting in his chariot on his way home, reading the prophet Isaiah out loud. The spirit told Philip, go and join the chariot. So Philip ran up to it and he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I? unless someone guides me. So he invited Philip to come up and to sit with him. Now the scripture passage he was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and a lamb is silent before its shear. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation for his life is taken from the earth? The eunuch said to Philip, I ask you, is the prophet speaking about himself or someone else? And Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with that scripture. Now that scripture is Isaiah 53, verse seven and eight. It was written 700 years before Christ. It's a prophecy 
And at the right time, at the right moment, Philip runs up to the right chariot on the right road with the right passage of scripture being read to then get up in the chariot and to tell him about Jesus Christ. Philip was moving from a revival that was taking place in Acts chapter eight to an individual here on the road to to Gaza. In this place here, he's moving from, from a lot of people to one person and God interrupts his plans. And I just ask you that question, can God interrupt your plans? Maybe you weren't planning on being baptized today, but God brought you for this message, this moment, this time to hear this word and God's gonna interrupt your plan and you're gonna have to say, okay, Lord, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow you. Maybe even digital family. We had this last year when we did Day of Baptism. We had somebody watching online. God touched their heart. They got in their car. They drove to the Loop campus and they got baptized in the next service because God showed up and God interrupted the plan. So Philip goes from a big revival in the beginning of Acts 8 and he moves from the revival into one individual person where this one individual person is the Ethiopian eunuch. What an amazing thing. And here's what happened. In Acts 28, verse 26 through in 27, he said, the Lord spoke to him and he got up and he went. I want us to say that together. You ready? We're gonna say that together. We'll put it on the screen at the bottom. We're gonna say it out loud together. You ready? One, two, three. The Lord spoke, so he got up and went. One more time. The Lord spoke, so he got up and went. Isn't that what the whole ball game's about just in life? God speaks, we say yes. That's Christianity right there in a nutshell. So here Philip runs up next to this Ethiopian eunuch. Now the Ethiopian eunuch is very influential. He's in charge of the treasury is what it said. He reports directly to Candace, the queen. Now we think of Candace as a name. It actually is a title. It means queen mother. So he reports to the queen mother. He's in charge of her treasury. He's riding in a chariot, which means he's got a lot of wealth. He's reading out loud so he can read. He's literate. He's educated. And he's reading the exact passage of scripture at the right moment. Now you're going to see in a minute that he comes to Christ. He's going to end up being a missionary, tradition tells us, to Ethiopia. Now that's just not the country of Ethiopia we know of today. It was more of a region. So like Sudan would be a part of this Ethiopian region. That would be kind of a big region. So he's going to be a missionary to those folks there. Now, I love what is said, though, in verse 35. Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with that scripture. So he goes through all of the Old Testament, beginning with that scripture, and he tells him the good news about Jesus. You know what is great about that? Philip and our message is Jesus. Philip and our message is Jesus. So I want you to hear today. The message is not just quit doing bad stuff and start doing good stuff. The message is not just go to church more. The message is not do more good things than you do bad things. The message is Jesus, the gospel good news. God sent his one and only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life so that Jesus lived a sinless life, died on the cross for me and you, and we can receive him as our savior, our payment. He steps up to the cash register and puts his money down and to be able to pay for all the sins that we've committed. We don't owe him uh, some type of debt. He's given us everything here. So now we're able to trust him as savior and to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now that is key. That is so key that then this Ethiopian eunuch, he believes in Jesus and puts his faith in Jesus. And we'll see in just a second, he gets baptized. So as we talk about baptism, what's the order? The order is we trust Christ as Savior. Now I'm a believer in Christ. And then secondly, I'm baptized to show it. It's like my college ring. This shows that I graduated from college. It's like my wedding ring. This shows that I'm married. Now, if I take these rings off, am I still married? Did I still graduate? Absolutely. But they're symbolic to the rest of the world to say this is what has taken place. So Jesus Christ in my heart is Savior. The next step is baptism. So why do you get baptized? You get baptized to symbolically show, we'll get this in, to this in a minute, to symbolically show that Jesus has washed you clean and changed your life. That's what it's about. Your heart's been washed by the blood. Now your body symbolically is washed, if you will, by the water. 
Now, I read this article and I thought, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. Um, in Huntsville, Texas, uh, we know that just a little bit north of us, March 2nd is Independence Day of Texas, so Texas Independence Day. It's also the birthday of, coincidentally, of Sam Houston. So Texas Independence Day and Sam Houston's birthday all in the same time. And so what they've started to do in Huntsville is that they make that now you can be baptized to be a Texan day. <laughs> I get that in your mind. So one of the former mayors has everybody come and they baptize you that you are a Texan. So what they do, he says, I now baptize you in the name of the Republic of Texas, General Sam Houston, Stephen F. Austin, Bonham, Bowie, Travis, and all these other Texas heroes. Now I affirm your new Texas citizenship and commitment to serve Texas as these mighty men do and make this a statement by saying, I do. Baptized as a Texan. Let me tell you what, the only time you need to get baptized as a Texan is if you ex have accepted Bucky's in your heart, okay? That's all you need. <laughs> Do you receive Bucky's as your Lord and Savior to pay the price for you with beaver nuggets? then baptism as a Texan may fit into the game. I have a, a, a pastor friend in Huntsville. I text him, I'm like, do you know anything about this? He was like, he said, that is ridiculous. I've never heard of that in 28 years of being a pastor in Huntsville. So I don't want Bucky's in my heart. I want Jesus in my heart. I'm not talking about being a Texan. I'm talking about being a Christian about walking with God. And your salvation does not come through baptism. No, sir. Your salvation comes through receiving Jesus as your Savior. So you take that step symbolically to say, now I want to walk in those ways and I want to take that next step of obedience. I want to graduate college, sure, but I got a ring. I want to get married, yes, but I want to tell the world. It's peanut butter and it's jelly. I want to put these two things together so that one can lead to the other, not for salvation. One is for salvation, receiving Christ as as Savior. The other is for symbolism. Let me tell it to you like this. Baptism is an outward expression of an inward change. See it? It's an outward expression of an inward change. And so that's what happens. So let's ask the question, who should be baptized? Is it believers or babies? It's believers, not babies. So here we have Philip speaking to an Ethiopian eunuch that is a man that's in the chariot. He's got a job. I showed all that to you. And so here he is as a believer. He's going to trust Christ as Savior. That happens there in the, the late 30s of this passage of Scripture, the 30s verses. And so you've got that. And so he trusts Christ. And we're seeing just a second that then he's going to follow through on baptism. The New Testament shows nothing, nothing of babies being baptized. So why does that happen? Well, our, our Catholic friends would believe this, that it's similar to circumcision in the Old Testament, that babies were circumcised and that was their entrance into the Jewish faith. And so then there would be baptism to remove original sin, to let's get that baby as, as clean as possible, as quick as possible. And so that would be like circumcision stepping in. Also, they would say in the book of Acts, you do read about households being saved. Now, when it talks about households being saved, it's not talking about, nobody goes to heaven in groups. Y'all know that? You don't go to heaven because you're Baptist. You go to heaven because you trusted Jesus as your savior. So a household doesn't go to heaven in groups. A church does not go to heaven in groups. Household means that the dad, the mom, and the household began, they came to Christ one by one, one by one. So that's the thought behind it. Now, let me just give you just, even in my life, let me show you a picture of me as a baby. You ready? That is my baptism right there. 1970, probably 71, because I was born in late 70 of August of 70. So that's my mom, that's my dad, Father Dubois from Acadiana Parish, Louisiana. Crowley, Louisiana is where I got baptized. I was baptized in a bowl of etouffee, okay? That's how, that's how Cajun my people are, all right? Oh yeah. So right there, I was baptized as a baby. And you know what? Let me just tell you this. I appreciate my parents' desire for me to be in the church. I appreciate it. I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. But also in the reading of the scripture, 
I see that that place was a place of symbolism to them, but it wasn't a personal decision by me. And so later, when I was a teenager, April 26th, 1987, I was 16 years old. I made that step to trust, or not to trust Jesus. I'd already done that in October. To be baptized on that day, I made the decision as a believer in Christ to be baptized. Let me give you a little church history just so we can know where, where we are. The early church, which is what we're reading about here in the book of Acts, till about 200 B, uh, AD was about believer's baptism is what we would call it. People would come to Christ. That's what you see all through the book of Acts. And then they would be baptized after they trusted Jesus as their savior. Then after about 200 AD, it moved to infant baptism. And we rolled with infant, ba infant baptism till uh, trying to remove original sin. We moved from that till the 1500s, which was called the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther nailed 95 theses, 95 protests onto the wall or onto the door of the church of Wittenberg. And he said, we protest. So they began to call these people the Protestants the Protestants. And one of the things they protested was that infant baptism was not found in the scriptures. And they wanted to now come back to the scriptures and in the Protestant Reformation with the printing press, with Gutenberg, that happened earlier, just a, uh, just a little bit earlier in the 1400s. Gutenberg started doing the printing press and people started reading their Bibles for themselves instead of just listening to some person that had a Bible tell it to them in a language they didn't understand. And so they began to read the Bible. And then what happened in that, you begin to have this group of people that said, well, we need to be baptized again. We didn't know that was in the scripture. So they were called the again baptizers, the Anabaptist. Then we dropped the Anna part of it. So the again Baptist, two guys, they were named Conrad Grabel and Felix Mann. They said, we are not gonna baptize our infant babies. And they said, if you don't baptize your infant babies, we're gonna kill you. It was ruthless back then. We're gonna kill you. They said, we're not going to do it. So they prayed all night long and they said, we're not going to do it. They gave them a night to pray. They prayed and they said, we're not going to do it. So they said, okay, fine. They took them in, in Zurich. They took Felix Manns and Conrad Grable. And they said, if you like water that much, then we'll drown you in the river. And they killed both these men. I can show you the picture. This is in Zurich. This is the river in which they were drowned. Beautiful place. There's actually a stone there that gives memory to that. It's written, you know, in German, so we can't read it. But there you see Felix Mann's third, third thing down. And so there they drowned them. They paid a huge, huge price. I'm calling you to something great, church. I'm calling you in the middle of the church with people that will cheer for you, for you to say, I'll be baptized. I'll stand in front of not, not a place to drown, not a place to be killed, not a place to make a big stand, but because Jesus Christ lives in my heart and I've never followed after salvation in immersion, I'll show you in just a second, to be baptized. These guys paid a heavy price. Now I'm grateful to my parents. I'm grateful for them doing the best that they knew how to do and best they knew, uh, wanted to do and trying to, to do well by that and all of that sort of stuff. And so I tell you, if you were baptized as a baby, as I was, I encourage you to appreciate your heritage. I encourage you to appreciate your family that tried to make that step in your life. I don't want to, I'm not setting up a war here, Protestant and Catholic. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to show you in the Bible what the Bible says about this so that then you can take that step for yourself. Now we do a thing here at our church, all campuses, we do what we call parent dedication. We have little babies come on this very stage and the parents pray and I talk and we have a great time and the parents are dedicating the child saying, I want the child to walk in the ways of the Lord. I tell that group every single time, this is not the baby becoming a member of the church. This is not the baby becoming a Christian. This is the parent saying, we wanna raise our baby in the ways of the Lord. And us saying as a church, we're gonna help you as much as we possibly can. My children have done that. Many of your children have done that as well. It's a blessing. It's a good thing for a parent to be able to say, let's go, this is the direction we're going as a family. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord, Joshua says. So now let's ask the question. We ask the question, is it babies or believers? I gave you history. I gave you uh, biblical uh, history as well. I read you the verse there. I give you a whole lot of other verses. So now let's ask this. Why is it? Is it symbolism or salvation? Well, it's symbolism, not salvation. If salvation was done by baptism, then that means your works bring salvation. See it? 
It's not our works, it's God's grace that brings us salvation. And so we trust in Jesus as our savior. Remember what he preached in verse 35? He said he preached Jesus to him from the scriptures. Didn't say he preached baptism to him from the scriptures. He preached Jesus to him from the scriptures. Now the New Testament knows no one in the New Testament of, a, of an unbaptized believer except for the thief on the cross who didn't have an opportunity. And so here we have the believers in Christ symbolically showing, what does it show? Romans chapter six, verse one through four, if you wanted to look it up later, it shows the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. See, when we baptize in just a moment, We'll say, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the newness of life. That is Romans chapter six, verse four is what we're reciting right there. So it's symbolic. He goes down into the tomb. He comes out into new life. So we've gone down into the tomb with Jesus. We've come back out into new life. It is symbolic in its nature of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So now let's ask, if it's believers, not babies, if it's symbolic, not for salvation, well, how do you do it? How do you do it? Is it to immerse or is it to sprinkle? Or is it to pour? Well, the Greek word is baptizo. Baptizo, and it's to immerse is what it means. There's other words to use for sprinkling in the Greek. There's other words to use for pouring in the Greek. Historically, I'm trying to give you some history outside the Bible as well. Josephus, one of the most famous uh, uh, Christian historians, he said this, and it is to use this word is to, to use it like to sink a ship. That's how he would use this word, to sink a ship. Plato said it's to immerse something in wine. So to put a cloth into wine and to bring it back out as a dye. How would you get a, a white cloth into be a purple cloth? Well, you would put it into a dye or you'd put it into wine. Then you pull it out. Plutarch said to be over your head and ears in debt. Now that's another sermon for another day, okay? But to be over your head and ears in debt. So the Bible uses the word immerse. In that time frame, Josephus, Plato, and Plutarch also used the word for immerse. Now, this is a big deal. Charles Ryrie put it like this. Even today for a Jew, his profession of Christianity is, and is not his profession of Christianity, nor his attendance at Christian services, nor his acceptance of the New Testament, but his submission to water baptism that definitely and finally excludes him from the Jewish community and marks him off as a Christian. So it's a difference a step. We have baptized Islamic imams that have come to faith in Christ. And we've had to do it in a hidden way to protect them. We've had to baptize people that we are unable to show their face in different ways because the baptism symbolizes, boom, so how does it happen? It happens when you take that step and you say, I'm aligning myself with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I'm placing my trust in him. Let me show it to you in the scriptures, verse 36. Let's actually begin in verse, uh, yeah, 30, 35 says this. Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with the scripture. And after they were traveling down the road, they came to some water, okay? That's a big deal. That's the sovereignty of God right there because remember they're going down a desert road. They came to some water. The, the eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? So he ordered the chariot to stop and both Philip and the, and the eunuch went down into the water. Do you hear that? See that? How do you go down into the water? You're immersed. He went down into the water and he baptized him. And look, verse, verse nine, 39. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away and the eunuch did not see him any longer, but he went on his way rejoicing and Philip appeared in Azotus and he was traveling and preaching the gospel in all the towns until he came to Caesarea. So here we have, Philip is right there and he says, what about the water? And the guy, the guy says, what about the water? What prevents me to be baptized? Can I just tell you this? What prevents me from being baptized? What prevents me from being baptized? What prevents me from being baptized? The water is in three different places on this stage right now. What prevents you from being baptized? Well, I don't have my clothes. Well, guess what, brother? We got clothes for you right here. We got undergarments. We got shorts. We got a t-shirt. 
You can keep it all. We don't want it back, okay? So here it is. So in just a minute, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna call you to do something really big. I'm gonna call you to stand up. You're gonna walk out either these doors here on the bottom floor or the bottom uh, doors of the balcony. There's gonna be somebody that'll help you. That'll take you downstairs. You'll get change of clothes and we will then line people up and we will have them come through and we will cheer for you. We will pray for you. We will help you in every way we can. And we're gonna ask you to stand up in just a few minutes and to come to be baptized. For what? There's water. Uh, what, what prevents me from being baptized? There's water. There's no hindrance for you being baptized today. So let me bring this home. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your savior? That's, that's first. We cannot miss that. I do not want to jump to the water before you have gone to the cross. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your savior? Just a minute, I'm gonna give you a time. We're gonna pray together and you'll be able to receive Christ as your savior. And if you have, have you been baptized after salvation? We've talked about that. By immersion, we talked about that, to say that I belong to Jesus. And if that hasn't happened, today's your day. And if you're a kid under 18 years old and your parents aren't here, we would like for you to talk to one of our counselors first and they'll try to, they'll connect you uh, to, to be able to talk with them so that you can then, we have baptism classes and different things like that. We don't want you to do anything that's gonna, you know, uh, hinder your parents' authority in your life, but if your parents are here and you look over and say, mom, can I, dad, is that this? then you go for it, right? If you're an adult, you go for it so that we can have that walked out in our life. Last thing I'll tell you, I remember in that April of 1987, I was sitting in church and the pastor would preach and I would feel something in my heart. And I went and talked to my youth minister. And I said, what's going on in my heart? I'm already a Christian. What's going on? He says, well, Greg, you haven't been baptized yet. Here's what I want you to do. You pray about it this week. And when the pastor starts talking next week, you pray and ask God if that's what he wants you to do. And if your heart's still kind of pounding, like some of yours is right now, I want you to get up front. I want you to come talk to the pastor. That's how we would do it in our church. Come talk to the pastor. and He'll pray with you and we'll schedule a time for you to be baptized. And I said, yeah. And I grabbed that pew in front of me. And what happened? That heart started going. That little 16-year-old heart going. And I stepped out. And I walked down that aisle, was greeted by my pastor. And I, at that point, said, I want to be baptized. And then my family came a couple weeks later, celebrated it with me. They were actually very excited about it because it was my decision. And that changed everything. It's a blessing. Saved October 21st, baptized April 26th. But I look back on those two really significant days. And today could be your day to trust Jesus as your savior. Stand up and walk to the baptistry and we'll take care of the rest. Remember when we started, I had you recite what Philip said about the Lord spoke and he came. That's what it said at the beginning. I want us to say this together. We're gonna personalize it. Right here's the last thing we're gonna say. The Lord spoke and I got up and went. Ready? We're gonna say that on count of three. One, two, three. The Lord spoke and I got up and went. One more time. The Lord spoke, so I got up and went. And if you're at the digital family right now, get in your car. We have an 11 o'clock service. You come on over. Five o'clock service as well. You come on over. But let's pray together. Father, we come in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you're moving in this time and in this place, and we trust you with that. And we ask, God, that you would speak to our hearts, and that's all we're asking. And then we'll get up and we'll go, and we'll trust you, God. You will do your work and we thank you for that, God. Right now, if you haven't trusted Jesus as your savior, he died on a cross for you to pay for your sins. And I just wanna ask that you pray with me, the whisper of the lips, but the sincerity of your heart. You just say this with me, meaning it from your soul. Jesus, I know that I have sinned. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Be my savior. I place all my faith and trust in you alone. Wash me clean with your blood. If you prayed that, you meant that 
Jesus saved your soul for all of eternity. Now, second prayer for some of us to pray. Lord, give me the courage to stand up to be baptized. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for watching. To find out more about Houston's First, you can subscribe to our channel or you can go to houstonsfirst.org.